Hey folks, I'm Hugh from Carol Sausage and Country Store. Cooking is my passion. If you're looking for the best recipes from the farm to the table, then you have come to the right place. So pull up a chair and let's eat. All right, well, welcome back, folks. I tell you what, we're, we're excited today. We're down in Stina Hatchie, Florida at Fiddler's Test Kitchen with my good buddy Jim Hunt from Fiddler's Restaurant right here in Stina Hatchie. And we have, I've known Jim for, gosh, several, several years, and you've been on my show several times in the past. We've done a lot of different things, had some good times, and we haven't had any bad times that I know of, so that's a good thing, I guess. It's always been good. Yeah, it's always good. I tell you what, folks, Stina Hatch in Florida is great fishing, some of the best scalping around, and some really good places to eat. And Fiddler's, Fiddler's Restaurant, to me, is one of the best that you're going to find around right here. And it's right on the water. You got an inn behind the place, Pelican Point Inn, plate, plenty of room to come down, spend the night. The Have a nice lounge there. Yep, the lounge is right there at the restaurant. You can walk right over to the restaurant. You even got a, a dock. Right out behind the inn. You can inn. pull right up, right up to the, right up to the restaurant in your boat. Get out and eat. Get in your boat. Go back fishing. You know, so, I wasn't going to mention about how long it is that the how old we're getting, but you know, we've been doing this down there for 19 years now. 19 years. Wow. So uh, <clears throat> that's telling on mine and your age. Yeah, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jim, I'm so thankful you let us come down today and. And uh, like I said again, we're, we're, we're in your test kitchen, Fiddler's Test Kitchen. It's an outdoor kitchen, so if you hear the wind blowing and the boats going by, I mean, we're literally sitting right on the Senahatchee River. Right at, basically, this is what you would call the mouth of the river, I guess, right here. Right there's the, the right. Gulf of Mexico, the, yep. and right here is the river. So yep, There you go. So we're you know beautiful place to set up. You do all your recipes here for the restaurant. You test, I guess, anything, that's, anything you put new on the menu, it's gone through here. It's gone through the taste test, it's gone through the approval, and then it goes on the menu. That's right. Yep. I get lots of uh, volunteers for the taste testing. Oh, I bet you do. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure that's not a problem. So, and you, you, uh, you've, your test kitchen, you've been, you've been right here in Stina, I mean, you've lived in Stina Hatchie for several, several years, even before you put the restaurant. 22. Yeah. I knew you'd been down here for a long time. So you've seen it come and seen it grow a little and seen a lot of, Storms come through and survive those, thank goodness. So that's great. But uh, well, I, I, you know, I give you a call a couple of weeks ago and wanted to get together and do some cooking while we were down here. Uh, we actually come down ourselves on a little fishing trip and enjoyed our stay there. The past couple of nights at the end, it was really nice and the food has been great down there at the restaurant. And I said, Jim, you know, let's do a little something, cook something up. And we just saw something breakfast kind of come to, our, to my mind, but not so much just something for breakfast. You can do this for dinner or breakfast. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a quiche. And this, you were telling me about it, and it's really easy. And this is, a, this is a uh, sausage and cheddar cheese quiche, but I will have to admit, it, it does much better with Carol sausage. Oh yeah, that's the best. And yeah, you're not twisting Carol's. my arm or anything, <laughs> yeah. but I gotta tell you, it really uh, does a great job. And the nice thing about this quiche is, is if you're hunting or if you're fishing, um, you can make this ahead of time at home. Your wife can make it for you. You can take it, put it in the refrigerator, get it out, take a slice, and you can either warm it up in the oven or you can put it in a microwave. Yeah. And you've got a full breakfast right there with the sausage and the eggs and the cheese and everything. Um, and it, it makes for a real nice breakfast. So, so it's quick and easy, it's, and it's not, a, it's not a real hard dish to fix. You've kind of gone over some of the ingredients and how you're going to make this with me before we got started. And basically, the, start, the beginning is just you take the frozen, you use the frozen pie shells, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, just go by the directions on the package. I'm, I'm you know, what, a couple, five or ten minutes in the oven on 325? About 350. 350. Just brown them. Brown them a little bit. And you'll you'll hear them. What, what I've done while we were cooking these earlier, we've already got these brown. I just I kind of looked at them and once they browned a little, and you can hear them sizzling and cooking, and they're ready to go. Because they're going to cook a little more once you put them in the oh, oven, absolutely. too. Oh, so. absolutely. All right, well, what's, what's the next step well, here Well, I'll tell you these? what, I, I went ahead and browned the Carol sausage right here. The, this is what you call the pan sausage. And if you divide that up in four of these quiche pies, uh, or the quiche 
uh, shells. So we're making four. We're going to make four, four pies. You actually got a big catering job tonight, so this is working out good for you. And we're I'm going to use part of this going, in, yeah. the, in the uh, catering job. So just and I'm going to mix up the uh, the egg mixture, which is with eggs and heavy whipping cream. And I use about I use about um, five eggs per um, shell. Five eggs, and then. How much sausage have you got here for the four? About a, maybe around a pound of sausage in each one, give or yep. take. That should be around four pounds in there. And, and this, of course, you can put it. You can make it meatier if you like, or you know, that's, more, that's up to less. you how meaty you want it to be. And the I nice am. thing about making this quiche is you can add things that you like to it. Um, you can put peppers, onions, I guess jalapenos if absolutely. you want to spice it up. I think peppers and onions would be good in there. Of course, not everybody likes the onions and peppers, but I do. I love them. And this, um, this is really, I guess, even for like breakfast in the morning for kids, for you know, for going to school, Mama could go ahead and get this ready the night before. This makes life so easy. And uh, you got a full meal right here in one. Pour the rest of that one in here. All right, we about got all those divided. Oh, we got a boat going by. They're going, I guess they're heading out now. Maybe we should stop him and put our order in. Yeah, go ahead and get the fish. <laughs> I tell you what, we had an excellent fishing trip uh, while we were down here. We caught, we went out with uh, her tanning bed charters. Oh, Mr. Don, he took us out. He put us right on those fish yesterday. We had a blast. Our cameraman, he was tearing them up. I, could, I, I didn't catch near I mean, usually I catch most of the fish, but our cameraman outdone me yesterday. So. Well, I told him not to fool around, to go ahead and take you to the honey hole to begin with. Yeah, so. well, I appreciate that. Yeah. That was a good You know, I try great. to help you out yeah. when I can, you know. <laughs> also, I'm yeah. going to add to this mixture of heavy whipping cream and the eggs is somewhat of a pinch of cayenne pepper. Um, this is not, this is not going to make it extremely hot or anything. It just gives it just a little bit of a twang to it. I like a little twang with mine. And with the twang of what I'm putting in here, this uh, little bit of cayenne with the egg mixture and a little bit of this. I, by the way, I use your mild pan sauce. Mild? Okay. Yes. And you, we've got other flavors, medium. Of course, most everybody that shops at the store, they know. Our medium is going to be a little more uh, spicier than the mild. Now I'm just going to go ahead and pour this in here. And divide it up amongst the four of them. Oh yeah, man, that looks really good. So you just kind of cover it just almost up to the top. Right, and I'm going to... Divide it up, and if I have a little extra, I'll divide that up. I don't want to waste it, but the now again on the temperature is 325 in the oven. Now, when we cook these now, uh, we're going to lower the temperature because it's going to take a little bit more. You know, slow it down a little bit. I've spilt this one over here. Um, we want to slow it down cooking. Um, so it gets done all the way through. Uh, now you were saying you recommend once you get, take them out, once they're done, they need to sit for about how long? <laughs> well, okay. I like to use wipe. them. I like to use them. Uh, I like to let them cool off uh, because they firm up. Because yeah. if you cut it, I mean, you can cut it when it's hot. Um, it's just real loose and everything. I like it where it stays, you know, in uniform when you cut it. Mm -hmm. But whatever, you know, whatever it, suits so you. So let it chill for a little, you know, set out. Let it kind of cool down. Now what we need to do, if you want to take some of this cheese and do yours over there, don't be afraid. Yeah, let me grab a handful We're going to give it plenty of cheese. I love cheddar cheese. Cheese is going to make it good. So you like to use the, use the sharp cheddar, is that what you like? Yes. 
Yeah, that's my favorite too. That sharp cheddar. But again, cheese. when you're making when you're, when you're making these quiches, um, a lot of times um, you can use your bacon and cook the bacon off, and then you can chop up the bacon and put it in the bottom of the pie shell, and then you can use onions and and use Swiss cheese instead of cheddar uh, cheese, yeah, yeah. and that's called that's that's quiche Lorraine. Okay, uh, yeah. that's the fancy name for it. Uh. But it's, you know, it's delicious also, just a different whole flavor with the bacon and everything. So you can change things around. I bet that applewood bacon we carry at Carol's would be awesome. There's no doubt mm. in my mind. You did bring some, right? I did. Yep. And I got you some smoked sausage. I don't know what all that. We got you a basket full of goodies in there. There you go. Well, I'm going to keep cooking then. Man, I tell you, that's what, that's what we need to do. <laughs> going to be a happy crowd tonight that's right all right i think we can take that's off it. and go Put to the oven. the oven well folks y'all come see jim at fiddler's restaurant at pelican point inn right behind the restaurant within walking distance got a docking docky boat fishing's great down at steena hatchy scalloping is you're wide open during scallop season we've got boats going by out here right now they're heading out scallop season's what in july month of july or it's so actually the the second week in june it opens okay second and week then of june it goes is... through uh the week after labor day okay good and trout season's in all year round yes. red fishing is great i oh one more thing we didn't mention you catch them you go out fishing and catch them get them clean and bring them to jim and he'll cook them and add the sides for you and everything and that's what we done last night down at the restaurant and it was awesome we had fresh people, fish and people all the love sides. that yeah and then good. we bring it out on a big platter and serve it to you family style where everybody can just dig in man that's better than going to grandma's home for sunday dinner i tell you what that's right well jim let's get them in the oven we're going to bake these do you said again 275 250 250 and then until they get done and then we'll take them out and let them sit and chill and we're going to slice us off a piece here shortly there you go sit down and eat some y'all don't go anywhere thank you jim all right Goods of Pecans is your family-owned source known for growing pecans with exceptional taste and quality. Now introducing a variety of all-natural pecan butters alongside their toasted gourmet treats. Taste for yourself their flavors of cinnamon, sugar, sea salt, and brand new sriracha. Don't forget to put pecan butter on your shopping list this season. And remember to shop Georgia Grown. Visit GoodsOfPecans.com to learn more about the products, view recipes, and to purchase pecans and pecan butter for your family. Wind down your weekday at Gin Creek Vineyards. Step inside the old pack house to sample any of our 13 wines. Can't get to Gin Creek? Gin Creek wines are now available at your local package store, making it even more convenient for you to relax and enjoy your weekday wind down with a sip of history from Gin Creek Vineyards. Have you heard about the great Georgia-grown oils and flowers made by Oliver Farm in Pitts, Georgia? This family-owned and operated business are pioneers in the field and are proud to offer you freshly pressed straight off the farm cooking oils. Use them like you would any other oil. Great for marinades, dressings, sauteing, frying, and grilling. Check out our webpage, oliverfarm.com, and see what we have to offer. Then pick up a bottle at Carol's for your next cooking adventure. All right, well, welcome back, folks. Um, I'll show you all a little spaghetti squash recipe uh, i hadn't cooked a lot of spaghetti squash in my life i grew up on yellow squash and zucchini squash and the kind that we used to grow in the garden but i'm actually going to try to plant some of this this year and i may even save some of the seeds out of this thing when i get it cut open but these are these are available around only certain times of the year um, and right now they just happen to be in season and the thing i like about spaghetti squash is when they're ready they actually you can keep them for a couple of months if you just keep them you know in a, in a dry uh location they'll stay you know they'll stay good for a couple of months and so that's a good thing about those you don't have to worry about you know really keeping them refrigerated either just keep them in a dry place 
So what we're going to do, I'm going to just split this. And you got to be really careful. Use a big knife, but you also need to be very, very careful when doing this because this is a hard. Just kind of start the knife into the top and then, like I said, push it down through. Once it starts cutting, you get through that stem, it does a little bit, e it gets a little bit easier as it goes down. But you want to use a good knife and a, knife and a good cutting board. And just cut that right down through the middle, just like that. As you see, it's full of seeds. First, you don't, first thing you want to do is scrape those seeds out. Let me set that in there. I've got a, about a half a pot of water boiling over here, as you can see on the stove. I'm going to try to speed this up a little by going ahead and, and pre-boiling the squash for maybe 15 or 20 minutes just until it kind of gets good and hot and maybe starts to tender. And then I'm going to um, put it in a baking dish, put a little Oliver Farms oil on it and put it in the oven until it just kind of, kind of brown it just a little bit. Just want to get all the seed, all those seeds out of there best you can. Just like that. There's a lot of different recipes online. I've been looking at lots of different ways to cook spaghetti squash. And we were talking about that earlier with the camera crew, some of the ways that they cook it. And uh, I think there's just honestly a lot of different ways and different things you can do with this stuff. A lot of people put Parmesan cheese on it after it's cooked. And actually you can scrape it out with a fork and it almost use it in the place of pasta for uh, just a regular spaghetti. And it's got to be very, you know, obviously much more healthier than spaghetti noodles, real spaghetti noodles would be. All right, I'm going to go ahead and quarter, just quarter this so it'll get you serving sizes. I said it's got to be very careful not to cut yourself because it is hard. Okay, here we go. Now, I'm going to drop these right in the water. And we're going to boil them for 15, 20 minutes till I get a little bit tender. Okay, we got our squash here. I boiled it for about 15 minutes. Got it, got it softened up a little. I'm just going to take those out. I'm going to lay this with the skin up. I mean, skin down, I'm sorry. Skin down. The meat side up. Lay it in this dish. Just like that. One more. This is Jerry's. All right, I'm going to put a little sunflower oil on here. We were debating whether or not to use the sunflower or the peanut oil or the pecan oil, but everybody seems to like the sunflower. Of course, the other stuff is really good too. Oliver Farms has got some good products. Oh, Clay Oliver, he's a local, local friend of mine. He lives right here, he grew up right here in the county and Georgia grown member. You'll see him all over the place. He does shows everywhere. He was up at the Perry Fair. He's at the expo. He's all over the place. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of my garlic butter seasoning on here. I've got the oven preheated to 350. Now, parboiling the squash is going to speed the cooking time up in the oven. Now, if, if you don't want to parboil it, you can just put it right in the oven and bake it for 45 minutes on 350. Or you can even pop it in. We were talking about that earlier to make it even to cut it, maybe to make it easier to cut and split is to poke a few holes in it, maybe wrap it in saran wrap, pop it in the microwave for, what, five or 10 minutes, Jeremy? Five or 10 minutes, and uh, it's a little easier to cut. As you notice, I had a hard time cutting it because it's so hard, but uh, that's it. We're gonna pop this in the oven, kind of toast this off. Once it gets uh, toasted after about, you know, 15 or 20 minutes in the oven, I'm gonna top it off with a little Parmesan cheese and be good to go. Y'all stay tuned, don't go anywhere.
Laurie Joe's, we strive to bring you the best products made from the finest and locally sourced produce around. Our store is stocked with a variety of Georgia-grown products and gifts. We always have our homemade chicken salad and pimento cheese ready and waiting for you. So come see us at 4428 U.S. Highway 319 North in Norman Park, Georgia, where we are preserving flavor, food, and fun. Or visit us at LaurieJoes.com, and we will ship right to your home. This is Business Spotlight. It's been 30 years since all of this started, and boy, have they grown. They being Carol Sausage and Meat Company, and Hugh Hardy is the CEO, and you oversee everything, and you check behind your people and as far as the meats and everything. But I want to do a little walk back in time, if we can, with history. How did all this start for you? Well, I, I purchased the company back in 2001, and um, we have just taken it. It started off in Sycamore, Georgia, and we've yeah. taken it since then, and we have just grown and uh, to you know, this huge store right here on Interstate 75 in Ashburn, mm -hmm. um, and also our store there in Sylvester, Georgia, yes. right on Highway 82. We built our business based on good quality products mm -hmm. and, and most of all, customer service. Our, our employees, uh, you know, they love our customers, they love waiting on people, and you know, mm -hmm. so that's, that's yeah. you know, those all those things combined has helped us to grow and, yeah. You know, and people come because you started out as, uh, focusing on meats. Of course, you've got thousands of products in this main store where we are today in Ashburn. But your meat counter, people are just amazed. They'll go, they'll walk from one end where the beef is all the way all to the way other to end the, to the sausage. Yeah. But your type of meats that you pick and choose, if you will, and your recipes, that's what separates you from a lot of the other guys in the business, right? Yep, exactly. We make a lot of our products right here in house. All of our sausages are made right here. We make couple two or three different kinds mm -hmm. of bacons we have uh, we do our own stuffed jalapenos and our stuffed mushrooms we make about 50 varieties of sausage yeah. anywhere from mild to hot to jalapeno and cheese yeah, it's all good. About, about day yeah. onion and cheese was our flavor of Georgia winter in 2017 and uh, medium smoke hit the People's Choice Award in yeah. 2016, so okay. a lot of good stuff. Yeah, that was then, this is now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Plan to spend a couple hours in here. Bring oh, yeah. your cooler. Definitely. Okay. Bring a big right. cooler. Thanks, you. Hi, I'm Holly Shoot. I'm the chef for Georgia Grown, and we are here today in the Georgia Grown Test Kitchen at the Department of Agriculture in Atlanta, Georgia. And my guest here today is Hugh Hardy from Carol Sausage. Holly, thank you so much for having us here today. It's here nice inside. to have you on my home ground. Yeah, I'm yeah, usually down in your neck of the woods. Yeah, we've so. been in our, our home and our <laughs> kitchen several times, and it is good. Get, get away from home and yeah. come to the big city, right Absolutely. across from the capital. I mean, it's, it's, it's super And see big. what we're doing here with Georgia Grown. So um, you've been a Georgia Grown member for a long time. Yeah, I've several years, uh, and I'll tell you what it has been a great, uh, great for, for Carol Sausage. I mean, we, we're we using the logo on our products that we're making. Uh, you know, of course, we, sausage is our biggest thing, and we make everything right there. So we, you know, we, we're, uh, we're just, we're doing really well with our sausage. We have over 50 varieties, and being a Georgia Grown member and people coming in from all over the country, I mean, different places around the world, they're looking for that homegrown, that good southern Georgia flavor, and we got it. And, uh, it, it, and the Georgia Grown program has just been great, great for us. I mean, we've, we've attended a lot of different shows, been to a lot of different events. Yes, Chef Holly, we have so many Georgia Grown products at Carol's, and they're all, you know, we have so many people that are members of Georgia Grown throughout the South and, and even up here in North Georgia that service our store. They bring their products to us. Of course, we like to sample it before we put it in, and so far we haven't had anything bad yet. If it's got the Georgia Grown on there, you know it's good. So, I mean, we, we've just got so many different things that we carry. One of them being, as you see here on the table today, is Bruce's honey. And that's what I wanted to, to show you and kind of uh, use one of my recipes using my homegrown sweet potatoes that we actually grew right there in, in some Turner County soil back home uh, with Bruce's honey and a little butter. And just, just a simple, easy recipe just to you know, show you, you know, a way to, to make use of honey. You know, we got the chance to go off. Uh, down to Bruce's Honey Shack, I guess it was a few months ago, back when the bees were really going good, and got to visit with Bruce, and got to go out, we actually put the bee suits on, and got to go out on his farm, and check out the hives, I mean, it was just the neatest thing, and the bees were just so active that day, and working, and, and he, he just, he told us so much, it was very educational, I learned so much that day. 
know, honeybees are one of the most important animals, and in fact, it's one of the, the about one third of the U.S. diet comes from the insect that pollinated plants. And honeybees are acceptable for about 80 percent of the process. And without honeybees, humans and wildlife wouldn't have much to eat or even to look at. You know, and then we talk about the beekeepers. How important is a beekeeper to us? Well, when you buy local honey, you're supporting the beekeepers and their efforts, you know, that, that they do to maintain and to increase a healthy hive of the honeybees. And no one is bigger or better advocate for the honeybee than a beekeeper is. And his way of life depends on these remar more remarkable insects, which I tell you, honeybees just play such a big role in our life that we don't even know it. And honey is so healthy for you. You can actually live off the honey. If that's all you have, you can actually live off the honey. Absolutely. So it's just, it's really neat. But anyway, back to what we were going to do here with this recipe. I've got some homegrown sweet potatoes. Simple, got a little butter, got a little honey. Got some nice sweet potatoes here. What kind of honey are you using? The gallberry? This, gall is, the, this is the gallberry, yes. Okay, we've got a little honey on here. A little butter. I'll just roll this right up in the pot. Without that, that uh, once we put these in the oven, all that, that honey, all that honey and butter gets absorbed into that sweet that potato. Goes right into the sweet that's potato. Nothing but goodness. I and go ahead. About 350. Yep. 350 degrees for 45 minutes to maybe an hour or so. Just check them once. And they're depending on the size of sweet potato. I use the small ones today. Now, like I said, I got these out of my garden. I did have some that were like gigantic. Mm -hmm. I hadn't cooked any of the big ones yet, but I'm hoping they're as good as these. But, you know, these take about 45 minutes to an hour on 350. And they're good to go. They go with any kind of meal you want to and throw a steak on You can also um, take it up a notch and take a little fresh lemon or orange zest and just grate it on top and before you, you wrap it up. You were telling me about that. That does sound really good. Chef Holly, thank you so thank much for you. having us up here. Thanks I'm excited. Now we got to get home. I got to go back and start making sausage. There you go. Getting ready for the uh, the weekend crowd. Good deal. Y'all don't go anywhere. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Have you heard about the great Georgia-grown oils and flowers made by Oliver Farm in Pitts, Georgia? This family-owned and operated business are pioneers in the field and are proud to offer you freshly pressed, straight off the farm cooking oils. Use them like you would any other oil. Great for marinades, dressings, sauteing, frying, and grilling. Check out our webpage, oliverfarm.com, and see what we have to offer. Then pick up a bottle at Carol's for your next cooking adventure. Wind down your weekday at Gin Creek Vineyards. Step inside the old pack house to sample any of our 13 wines. Can't get to Gin Creek? Gin Creek wines are now available at your local package store, making it even more convenient for you to relax and enjoy your weekday wind down with a sip of history from Gin Creek Vineyards. At Laurie Joe's, we strive to bring you the best products made from the finest and locally sourced produce around. Our store is stocked with a variety of Georgia grown products and gifts. We always have our homemade chicken salad and pimento cheese ready and waiting for you. So come see us at 4428 U.S. Highway 319 North in Norman Park, Georgia, where we are preserving flavor, food, and fun. Or visit us at lauriejoes.com and we will ship right to your home.